The world of gaming mice is pretty populous these days with things like the Cougar Surpassion, the Thermotake Iris, and even this, the Adata XPG Infrarex M and R10, all coming in at a pretty similar price point. Now, since this world is so populous, I feel like adding another one to it just, well, gives you a lot more choice, but it makes it difficult to stand out from the pack. Cooler Master though, they think they've done that with this, the CM310. It is a budget gaming mouse, comes in at around about 25 to 30 pounds, depending on your region and things like that. You can check out the link in the description down below if you're interested in picking one up, or just checking out the price when and where you watch this. But otherwise, it's a pretty interesting mouse, so let's take a look at it. So let's clear out the competitors and have a look at this, as I said, the CM310. Now this one features a Pixart PMW3325 sensor, which is pretty common among these sorts of mice. It has up to 10,000 DPI of uh, kind of range if you like, and has seven different uh, sort of DPI ranges. So you have uh, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and then a rather big gap to 10,000. This is all set with the two buttons on top, the DPI plus and DPI minus buttons, as this is a fully softwareless mouse. Now, as you may have noticed when I was cycling through the DPIs, when you're changing your DPI setting, the color of the rear sort of outline Cooler Master logo as well as the scroll wheel changes depending on which setting you're on. Now since as I said this is a softwareless mouse at least as far as I could see in the press materials anyway uh, it means that it's actually a really nice way for you to just a quick quick glance down at your hand and see that scroll wheel what color it is and know what you know kind of DPI setting you're on and a quick change will let you know that it has changed the next one or whatever it's a, it's a nice feedback mechanism and I'm pretty happy they've implemented it. Now of course this wouldn't be a 2018 product without a whole load of RGB so uh, there is a full uh, kind of line all the way from the front left uh, front of the left click to front of the right click and all the way around the back of the mouse the central button on the top that you saw next to the DPI buttons is the RGB changer button and allows you to change uh, f I think five different modes including off so there's a rainbow mode which looks quite cool and is probably what I'd either leave it on or just turn them off for kind of less distraction under my hand now since we're talking about aesthetics anyway let's take a look at the actual mouse's shape itself now they claim that it's an ambidextrous shape and while I can see how they can they can get away with that the buttons are only left hand side of the mouse which means that it is definitely more suited to right hand users and while I am personally left handed myself I'm someone who uses right handed mice anyway so uh, kind of if you fancy it you can give it a shot obviously it's not horrifically expensive but I wouldn't necessarily overly recommend it as a quote left handed mouse at all but just something to bear in mind now it definitely suits at least for my hand size in a way a more palm grip style. I personally do a sort of hybrid which I think a lot of people seem to do but either way in theory it can support both. If you have smaller hands then it might be a little bit difficult as it is one of the longer mice compared to some others but for me it was perfectly comfortable and I would be very happy gaming on this for, for prolonged periods of time. Now one of the things that actually make this mouse stand out over the other competitors is actually the sides. It has very nice soft touch rubber grips on both both sides of the mouse which makes it very easy to hold on to to pick up and to flick and, and do that sort of thing so uh, in terms of comfort and especially the overall exterior build quality is actually pretty decent since we're talking about build quality let's talk about those buttons on the left hand side now those the actual plastic they used to make them feels a little bit on the cheap side but I must say that the design of them themselves is actually really nice they're very well supported they're not overly mushy but they're not you know kind of disgustingly firm I really feel like they're, they're the perfect set of you know you've got tactile feedback but they're not kind of too hard or soft if you like they're, they're the Goldilocks zone for buttons they are a little bit on the small side but they're perfectly easy to hit they're in a good position for my thumb and obviously it depends on your hand size but for me I'm very happy with those placements back on top of the mouse the scroll wheel is covered in a soft touch plastic which is quite nice I feel like it may degrade over time but the overall kind of stepping on it is, uh, is nice enough it's easy to middle click so I'm pretty happy with that. On the bottom of the mouse there is two reasonably sized glide surfaces and obviously that PMW 3325 sensor. 
Now, the sensor itself is, as I said, one that is common to a number of other of these budget mice, but I would say that I had a really enjoyable gaming experience with it. I was playing things like CSGO, and well, of course, this isn't going to be the, the sort of mouse that a pro would pick up and do, you know, pro leap, pro, you know, flick shots or whatever. Uh, for a beginner or anyone who is just an average gamer who wants a decent quality mouse that will play FPS or really any game you want just fine, I think this is a great shout. In terms of reliability, the mouse is rated for 30 million clicks, which is pretty decent. So obviously I'm expecting that their Omron switches or something similar for them to be rated that highly. And that's decent. It's generally fairly standard across most mice, but still nice to see. And you do get a two year warranty along with it. Now, of course, this is, as I said, at least as far as I can see, a softwareless experience. So if you're someone who prefers to be able to control things like what DPI settings you have or what your side buttons do all the time, as opposed to just in game uh, then this mouse won't be for you you can't customize that without you know aftermarket software or third-party software so just keep that one in mind but if you are someone who likes a simple experience decent enough build quality and as I said that sort of kind of a cheap price point then it is actually a very nice mouse and I'd be overall pretty happy to recommend it now how does it stack up to the competition well the thermal take iris is a nice mouse I feel like this one has a little bit better build quality though and while the thermal take is obviously a lot more right-handed oriented compared to this one I would still say that this one is perfectly comfortable so overall between the two I would probably go with the cool master uh, you know the CM310 now comparing to the Cougar Surpassion though, that's where it gets interesting because I love that mouse. It is a great value for money. You get a display on the bottom where you can change your uh, kind of refresh rate and, or uh, your refresh rate and your uh, DPI really easily. And obviously while it is on the bottom, you're not gonna be doing that on the fly. It gives a very clear and very easy to understand and you don't have to memorize colors to, to work at what DPI you're on. But um, you know, that's very nice. And obviously while well, that's also a softwareless experience, they're both very similar price points although I would say that the build quality does feel a little bit better on this and also because of those rubber side grips this one is a little bit nicer kind of long-term use. So would I put this on my desk? Well personally I'm pretty happy with my Razer Naga Trinity. The the extra buttons are, are nice for me and while this only weighs a hundred grams uh, which is obviously great for that sort of FPS style of flicking it around and the liftoff distance is around about three millimeters. For me I would say that the uh, the Naga Trinity is, is, is what I'm used to and it's it's one that I prefer personally, so I'll be sticking with that. I am perfectly happy, however, to give this a gold award and recommend it alongside the Cougar Surpassion and the Thermotech Iris. It's all great, cheap gaming mice, so feel free to take a look at any of them. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. Is this something that really appeals to you as a great product or is this too much RGB, too flashy? Uh, you know, is it missing some features? Would you like to see the software? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know down there. If you have any questions as well, feel free to also leave them down there too. As I said, if you want to check out the mouse, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below where you can check it out. That'll take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. You can also check out the other links down below, including buying merch if you fancy a Texium GB t-shirt or hoodie. There's also, I think, stickers available too if you fancy sticking it on your PC case or whatever. Um, and also, of course, if you want to support me directly, you can also do that through Patreon. Or you can use the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliates when buying things like this or garden sheds, whatever else in between. It all massively helps out and keeps me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis. If you want to take a look at other videos, there are plenty over here. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.